Hi, I'm Paul Potratz with Heldeberg. I'm located in Sharon Springs, New York, which is three hours from New York City, three hours from Boston, and an hour from the Albany International Airport. Today, I'm gonna go over Maxim, the Super Defender with an Arctic package. So before we get started into Maxim the Super Defender Arctic Package, which by the way, I'm gonna explain why it's a Super Defender and what the Arctic Package is, I wanna explain the process of bespoke. I use the word bespoke often, but if you read the about me on my website on heldeberg.com, you'll know that I am a big English uh, angiophile, basically anything English, I'm all about it, whether it's my clothes, my boots, my wax coats, my bicycles, my shotguns. Anyway, it's not, this isn't about me, but you get the point. So bespoke means custom built, like a custom suit. It has nothing to do with any other builders that maybe their name is bespoke or whatever it is. Bespoke means custom built, and that's exactly what a Heldeberg Defender is. Because when we do the initial conversation, I'm asking how tall are you? How much do you weigh? How are you gonna use it? How often are you gonna drive it? Do you plan on passing it down to your children? So it's a custom built specifically to you, your lifestyle, and how you wanna use it. So now that we got bespoke out of the way, probably one of the biggest questions I get is, what is the process? I wanna buy a Defender, so what is the process? There's a couple different ways, but essentially what we do is we have a conversation for me to understand what is it that you wanna do with the Defender? What is the style? Do you want more of a Arctic design, adventure design? Do you want more of a gentleman's design or a classic design or, or a beach cruiser? What exactly is that? So we have the conversation and then of course we go over and we talk about a D90, which a D90 is a three, three door, a D110, which is the five door. There's also a D110 three door, and then the D130, which is the really popular Enzo, the D130 on my website. So we talk about the design, and then what I do is I create a build sheet. The build sheet outlines the design of what exactly are you going to receive. It has a final price on it, and then you put 50% down. That 50% down gives you the Defender. All my prices include the price of the truck itself. That gives you a build slot, gives you a Defender, gives you a VIN number. And then what I do is I mail out your welcome kit. Your welcome kit has your leather swatches. And then of course your headline swatches. So the headliner material. And then we start talking about the seat design, the leather color, whether we're doing a single color leather, a dual color leather, a leather and a tweed. <clears throat> so we get through all of that. And then that's the first thing we do is we order the interior. So that's really the process. On average, currently, as of doing this video in 2021 of July, it takes, well, almost July, it takes about 12 to 14 months on average to build a Defender, depending on the design you want. If it's a D90 soft top, it could be on the shorter end. If it's a D110, D130, it could be on the longer end and maybe even a little longer. So on average, it takes a little over 3,000 hours to build a D110 or a D130. It's a lot of work, but I think you're gonna understand why when we get into the review. So that's the process of ordering a Defender. Other little questions that I get too is how much is the insurance? I pay about $360 for a full coverage at the value of a D110 and it's 360, I believe it's every year. It might be every six months, but it's not very expensive. And yes, you can drive them on the road. Yes, you title them and license them like any other used vehicle. So starting with this, Maxim, the Super Defender Arctic Package. This is a 1996 model. Keep in mind, every Defender that comes into the country legally has to be at least 25 years old or older. So Maxim, the Super Defender has a 300 TDI. TDI, it stands for turbo diesel. It's fuel injected. That's all we do is the 300 TDI for the US or the TD5 for Canada. Because in Canada, the vehicle only has to be 15 years old, not 25. So in the States, we got a little bit longer to wait before we can start legally doing the TD5. The 300 TDI is a very desirable motor in the entire world 
Reason being, the 300 TDI has no computer. It has no electronics to go bad. It's a mechanical engine. It's the end of that mechanical engine, and it's very desirable. People throughout the world are trying to basically, uh, what do you want to call them, uh, snatch these up with the 300 TDI and an R380 manual five-speed transmission because it's the end of the era of the Defenders. This is the motor, this is the type of truck, meaning the 300 TDI five-speed manual, is the one that you will see in the Serengeti and the Outback in the remotest parts of the earth because they're highly reliable, very fuel efficient, easy to work on, and it's just, there's no drama when it comes to a 300 TDI. It's also good with the modifications, so you can get the horsepower, you can get the torque, they're just great bulletproof engines. I've seen many of 300 TDIs with over a half a million miles with minimal repairs. So this one being a 300 TDI, it also has a, a VNT, I think uh, somebody's coming to see us, but anyway, it has a VNT turbo on it. Uh, VNT turbo stands for a varial nozzle turbo. So it's a more modern design. And then it has a performance head that's been polished, ported, blueprinted so it has bigger water jets which increases the low end torque and the mid-range torque it has larger bigger springs it just creates a lot of additional uh let's say low end mid-range grunt it has a performance exhaust system so it's a three inch downpipe that gets rid of that exhaust quicker which makes the the vehicle much more efficient and then sitting right over here is a large quad core intercooler. That intercooler gets more cold air into that turbo, therefore making the truck much more efficient. The 300 TDI normally has about 106 horsepower originally from the factory, but then after with, of course, the torque, don't get so focused on the horsepower, the torque is the important, but when we're done with it, it's closer to 200 brake horsepower and the torque is tripled. So. With a Helderberg Defender, you have three options in engine. You have our base engine, which is modified. You have our mid-level engine, which is a great engine, meaning that it has performance upgrades. And then we have our top performance tuned engine that you can definitely tell a difference. So three engine choices. We're gonna get more into that, but first let's start with the grill. So you'll notice the grill is a KBX plastic grill. And if you've listened to me or watched my videos or talked to me, you know I'm not big on mass produced grills that are plastic grills. It's a nice grill, don't get me wrong, but it's just kind of weird to me that we do all of this work to create a complete bespoke D90 or D110 or D130 <clears throat> with the beautiful paint job and all everything is hand done nothing is picked off of shelf a number of these parts are fabricated by us or other shops that are very small shops so understand that the vast majority of the parts almost well really all of them other than the grill and the headlights are not picked and the marker lights are not picked off of a shelf they're made by a craftsman but as far as kbx grills go I do like this grill. It fits with the truck nicely. So I do like the KBX Premium open face grill. You'll see that I do this on the Puma Autobiography D90. You see that I did this on Mare, which is another D90, which you can see on Heldeberg.com. So you have a number of different grill choices. On average, we have about eight different grill choices. You'll notice the word eight is used a lot. But when we talk about the grill, this piece and then the headlight surrounds. So this is KBX, this comes as a package, as do the vents on top of the wings. There's your trivia. This is not called a fender, it's called a wing. This is called a bonnet, not a hood. And then that's called a windscreen, not a windshield. So this comes as a package, more or less. These side vent, top vent, headlight surrounds and this. So about eight different choices. I always prefer metal. Moving to the bumper, I really do like this bumper. It is solid steel. If you were to hit something here, it's going to cause serious damage to whatever you hit. Keep in mind that the solid steel bumper is actually bolted to a solid steel frame. So the body sits on a frame and I get asked a lot, can you put airbags in one of these? The answer is no. There's no computer, you can't do it, but you are sitting on a solid steel frame that will cause a lot of damage to whatever you hit. 
Uh, the bash plate here, this is an option too, meaning that we have some different designs, three different designs in the bash plate here. Steering dampener protector is what it's really called, but it is very thick steel also. So if you were to hit something, it's definitely going to per protect the steering dampener under here, which by the way, this is a Bilstein steering dampener, which is the best of the best, either Bilstein or Fox. And then it's, but it's going to protect the front under and all that. So there's also a differential protection plate on the front. Now you're starting to see why it's a super adventure. A lot of protection here. It does have LED headlights and LED marker lights. On the headlights, we have three different options, possibly four when it comes to headlights, but they are LED. They are super bright, high beam and a low beam. And then with this one, you'll see that there is no driving light. So we did build the driving lights into these LED headlights. Uh, the LED headlights, I have the darker bucket here. And then I have the ones that are brighter that you would see on Derwent or you would see on Verboska that they actually look like a piece of jewelry. The marker lights here are also LED. This is the smoke style. So you can do smoke, you can do clear, or you can do the classic where it actually has an orange and a clear here. And then in the rear, would actually be your typical red lights. So when you flip on the turn signal, this actually lights up orange. It's not clear, it's just the LEDs that are in it. On the bonnet, I get this, asked this a lot where it says Defender. You can do Defender, you can do Land Rover, or you can leave it completely blank. You can do this in black, burnished silver, or silver when it comes to the letters. I would not recommend painting it. So if you ask us to paint it, I'm gonna say, eh, we can't do it because the paint will chip off of these. This is a Puma bonnet. Noticing the Puma bonnet is a raised bonnet. It doesn't serve any purpose. There's not like the engines coming up high or anything in there. It's just a more modern feel. It looks a little more G-Wagon versus the Heritage bonnet is a lower, it doesn't have the hump here. It's just a lower section, which you can see on Emma. Emma has the Heritage bonnet with the tire on top. Hinges on it, hinges are billet aluminum, designed CNC machine. So that's something that we create on that. Uh, and then right here, of course, is your checker plate, black checker plate. You can also do the option of silver, which I will try to talk you out of, because the silver just tarnishes in a matter of a couple weeks. It just looks weird. But this actually has a powder coat on it. And you'll notice that our bolts, because this is bolted to the top of the wing, all the bolts are turned in the same pattern. So in other words, the bolt heads aren't all different things. Everything lines up. So the top of the wing is actually aluminum. So this really does serve a purpose because this is very strong. You can stand on top of the wing, but when you're doing oil changes, you really you don't have to worry about denting the top of the wing because again, the body of a Defender is all aluminum. So if you push down, you can get dents. I've dented it on Elizabeth because honestly, I prefer no checker plate, but it serves a purpose. It's really, it's needed on this because that's the design of this Super Defender. So moving back a little farther, you'll notice under the windscreen, the windscreen has the flaps. They are functional. You, do, you can flip those up from inside the cabin and it gets fresh air into the cabin. It's not that you need it, but it's just a really cool feature. A lot of them you'll see that those have been sealed off completely because you can get a little air and a little noise through them, but we always make them functional. We replace the cables and we replace the bolts. And we replace the seals to make them functional. So really cool thing. The headlight washer, the, the headlight, not headlight, the windscreen sprayer for the windshield wash, you'll notice it's different. It's also billet aluminum. It's one of our designs. So it gives a very nice pattern on the windscreen because the original stock one does this little stream in one place and sometimes the other one kind of works a little bit. It just dribbles. This does a nice modern pattern. The windscreen, you do have a couple different options. You can do tinted, non-tinted, and then you can do the heated version. This is the heated version. You flip a switch, it heats up the windscreen. So if you're in the snow, it's melting the actual snow off of the windscreen. Same thing with the headlights. The headlights have a switch inside. You flip the switch, it heats up the headlights because LED does not put off any heat and it will melt the snow off of the headlights, hence Arctic package. So going around it, you'll notice the roll cage. It is a six point roll cage. And it, here's the thing about roll cages. You will see roll cages that are not really functional, that are just bolted to the body. We never do that. Our roll cages are functional. 
there's a cut in the wing, there's a cut in the rear quarter, and the roll cage goes all the way to the frame and is attached to the frame. So it is a true supportive roll cage system for this for this Super Defender is what it's doing. It's made by safety devices, but then you can also have the option to put an LED light bar or individual LED lights, and you can also put a roof rack on top, which I would say stick with the safety devices roof rack because it is a bolt, a direct bolt system, creates a nice cage, but it will raise the height of the vehicle. This vehicle with the roll cage is approximately, I believe this one is 80, let me think right, uh, 86 to 87 inches tall. So it is tall and it won't go on a regular transport truck if it's an enclosed transport truck. It could also prove a little difficult depending on the opening of your garage. So it's sitting on a three inch suspension lift. Notice there's the different types of lifts. You can do a body lift, which is really the poor man's way to raise, and I don't mean that negative, but it really, you're just raising the body which is just moving it up off of the frame. This is a true suspension lift. So when you do a suspension lift, you're really limited on how high you wanna go because it can start to cause a lot more issues. Because when you raise it up, this is not a daily driver. This is a fun truck, have fun in the snow, have fun in the sand, have fun in the mud, have fun on the trails. You can daily drive it if your commute is short, but if you think about, if you're thinking you're gonna get in this and drive it for two hours, you know, to your work or wherever it is, you can do it, but it won't be the most comfortable, A, for the suspension lift, but also the tires. The tires on this are called the Maxxis Trepidors. These are the competition mud tires. They're a very sticky tire. They are not DOT legal because they are a competition mud tire. They are 35 inches tall and they make some noise going down the highway. But I will tell you in the snow and in the mud, they do extremely well. You can see how well they do. There's videos on Heldeberg.com with this Defender in the snow where we're having fun. And then while you're at it, go ahead and check out Enzo the D130. It has the same type of tires. When you're lifting a Defender, there's the proper way to do it. So this one, has been lifted properly. And what it is, is it actually has coil springs all the way around, no leaf springs. So we change the coil springs out, which raises the truck up higher, creating the tires 35 inches being taller, and then the, the actual coil raising it up, helping the clearance. But the coil springs raise this up almost, almost three inches. So by bigger tires, and bigger coil springs, you're really messing with the geometry of the truck. So to do it properly, especially with the size of these tires, now you need to change your propeller shafts, you need to change the diameter, the, how the axles are, because you're making your axle rotate. So now you have to change the camber, you have to actually do the different radius arms on the front and the rear, because you want to bring that axle back to the correct position because if it's not, if it's tilted, you're creating more tension on the transfer case, the transmission, the drive shafts, the front and rear differentials. So you're making parts wear much faster. So you just really want to do it properly. So this one does have, it has Fox shocks and then it has the bigger springs. So by doing that, it needs a beefier axle. So we beefier is a term, by the way, meaning a thicker, more robust, heavy duty axle system in it. So heavier duty axles, we change the front and rear differentials into a different gearing to account for the size of the tires. 35 inches is a pretty tall tire. These competition mud tires are mounted on what's called a bead locker wheel system. We have about 10 to 12 different wheels. Um, meaning not just bead lockers, but different ones like the sawtooth alloy, the steelies, which are the wolf wheels that you'll see on our soft tops. But this is a bead locker. So what bead locker means is you have your center mounting points where it actually mounts to the axle, holding it onto the truck. But then there's a steel rim that holds the tire in place. That allows you to drop the air pressure down on these tires to about four pounds of air pressure, making the actual imprint of the tire much larger. So if you're in the snow, you're creating more of a traction point to hold on. Or if you're in the mud, you're creating more surface area to actually dig through the mud. And I know a lot of times people are like, oh, if you use skinnier tires, it's better in the snow. 
Yes, that is true. Skinnier tires, like snow tires, are better in the snow for your family sedan. But if you have an Arctic package, the wider the tire and able to adjust the air pressure in it is what makes a difference. This vehicle does have an onboard air compressor so you can air the tires down and then air the tires back up once you come out to get out of the snow. Again, Arctic package. Let's talk about the color. Right now, when you're looking at it, you're probably thinking it's pretty white. But if you see the videos on Helderberg.com where I'm actually playing in the snow with this, you'll notice that it has a blue. It has a blue undertone. So it's not a Fuji white. It's an Arctic white. So it has that blue undertone, just like snow does. That we, If you really look at snow, it has that blue color. So that's what the paint is. Arctic white. And then, of course, we have the black Santorini grill and just regular black checker plates on it. Uh, roll cage, pretty self-explanatory. It's a powdered black. And then you'll notice under the doors, we do the rock sliders, which are also a black. It really, it's a, it's a tubular metal. They're very strong, very dense. I'm not really big on checker plate that go under the doors because they're just screwed to the aluminum and they tend to pick up a lot of sand and salt and grit and nastiness and it's just hard to keep them clean. So that's the front of it, uh, other than the intercooler. And I will tell you, a Helderberg Defender, I'm asked often that, you know, what makes a difference in the price? Why are the prices of a Helderberg Defender different? Because it's really a new car. I mean, it's understand that these parts are not picked off of a shelf. This vehicle is not mass produced like, let's say, a modern day Jeep. Every nut, every bolt, every stitch in the interior and in the leather is all done by hand by an individual. And that means a lot to me that I'm getting a vehicle that I know was all done by hand. There was no robots done. It's hand, the painting was done by an individual that went around and sprayed it. It is a frame off ground up restoration. And again, I'll say it one more time. Every nut and bolt was turned by an individual. And then we test it after we get it all together. We drive it, we put some miles on it, we bring it back in, we start a disassembly on it, on the parts that we know where we need to disassemble. We check it, we retorque, and then we put it back together. And then it's ready for the client. Well, of course, after we do one more drive. So wheels and tires moving in farther, let's talk about the brakes. So this one has our standard brake system on it, which we do is a four wheel disc system. Originally the Defender had drums in the rear and disc in the front, and we get rid of all of the old brakes, the brake lines, and we go with the new system that we have. Again, this is be the standard brake system, but we also have what's called the big red brake system. And the big red brake system, I would recommend for a build like this because it will bring it to a stop much faster. So talking about a little more in the details of a Helderberg Defender where I said, you know, where people say, oh man, I could buy two Jeeps and save money. It's not hand built. This is hand built and there's a lot of performance parts on it. Meaning that a Helderberg Defender doesn't have a lot of the OEM parts, the original equipment manufacturer parts from Land Rover a lot of those designs are 40 to 60 years old. We manufacture or we work with craftsmen to create a lot of our own parts to make it a really good driver and also use the years of the modern technology and developments that go into play. So the system here with the modernized brakes, the hubs are stronger, heavier duty, the propeller shafts are heavy duty, transmission is heavy duty, the transfer case is heavy duty, front and rear differentials, I might have already said that, are heavy duty. So everything under it's heavy duty because of lift and because how much weight on this unslung, you know, this wheel and this tire spinning, creating all that force, that's a lot of wear and tear on a vehicle. So a lot of performance parts into this build, any, well, any of the Helderberg builds is a lot of additional, I mean, everything from polyurethane bushings, our air conditioning systems, our radiators. So, which brings me to the point, I get a lot of people like, what all's new? It's easier for me to tell you what's not new than what all's new. So what's not new? The frame, part of the body, notice I say part of the body 
in the engine block. One of the things that we do is we keep the numbers matching. Because every one of our defenders, what we do is we run it through the British Heritage Registry. And what that allows us to do is we get a piece of paper from the British government that gives us the numbers, the number of the body, the number of the frame, the number of the block. We keep those numbers matching and then the appreciation, the value continues to climb year after year. In fact, Business Insider and Forbes Magazine, they do a report every year of the top 10 vehicles to buy as an investment. And Land Rover Defenders have been on that list for the last 10 or 11 years in a row. In fact, Land Rover Defender for going up in value, appreciation has outpaced the stock market. I know it's weird to think about being able to buy a vehicle, drive it and enjoy it, and it goes up in value because we all know that a vehicle is a depreciating asset. But if you get the right ones, it's appreciating assets. So Land Rover Defender goes up in value. The classic Ford Bronco goes up in value. A lot of different Ferraris go up in value. Uh, Cobra G, the, Cobra, the Shelby Cobras, they go up in value. So there's a number of cars that go up in value and the Defender is definitely one of them and it's been on that list for a number of years. So it really is an investment. So if you're trying to convince your wife or your husband that you wanna get a Defender, just take a look, do your research and you'll see how they're going up in value. So it is a smart investment. It's not a sales pitch. I'm just telling you that's how I convinced my wife and uh, it's, it's worked well. So what's new on it? It's everything, the radiator, the fan clutch, the timing belt, the cylinder head, the injection pump, the exhaust system, the U-joints, the brakes, the hoses, the, all of the glass, the seats, the seat frames, the carpet, the doors, the mirrors, all the lighting, just everything's new on it. Again, the only thing that doesn't go new is the frame, part of the body, and the engine block keeping those numbers matching is what it's going. So all the glass is new, all the seals are new, everything's new. So you have a vehicle that will last for a number of years. It's a brand new vehicle, you know, it would be like going to a dealership and buying a 2022 Ford or getting ready to and saying, is there any rust on it? There's no such thing on a Helderberg Defender. So it's a beautiful vehicle, but some accents, some things that when you're doing the design, it's important to keep everything matching and flowing. And Maxim, the Super Defender, it's super popular on Instagram. People seem to love this. People that see it in person love it. But I think it's the design and how we bring it all together. These big wide tires, you notice the eyebrows here, the arches. These are not your standard eyebrow arches. These are wider. However, they're a little shorter than the tires by design. These were fabricated. In other words, these were hand done to fit the truck, but we wanted the tire to stick out a little bit for more of that rugged, aggressive looking feel. I'll warn you though, where the tires stick out farther, and I know this all too well on Enzo, is it swings up dirt along the side of the truck. Uh, when it's a rainy, wet day, you can't drive 10 feet unless you make this truck dirty, nasty. So moving back, it does have tinted windows. This is a 15% tint on the front. And this is not a film applied to the window. It's actually done when it, the window is being made. So it's a safety glass, two pieces of glass put together with like a piece of plastic in the center. So it just crumbles if you were to break the glass, but that's where the window tint is done. It's done in between the two, piece, two pieces of glass. So it won't fade, it won't crack, it won't peel, it won't chip. It's just a really nice glass. It's a thicker glass than the original Land Rover glass. And what I've seen is a lot of builders will leave the original windows in there, but the original Land Rover glass is a thinner glass and it scratches really easy. We don't do that. All the glass is new. The glass here is new and the glass on the sides, the cargo window is new. The Alpine windows on the top is new and so are all the seals. So moving back a little farther on the side here, the cargo windows, you have options here. We can do clear, we can do a 5% green tint, we can do a light gray tint, or we can do the 70% dark gray tint. That's legal because it's in the back here. Other options on the side cargo windows is you can have the single pane glass, which is really the most efficient for your heating, your air conditioning, and then when you're washing it, you know, washing it with a hose or at the car wash, 
water ingress is not an issue versus the sliding windows, they will take water on. So you have the sliders, you have the single pane, and then the third choice you have is called a panoramic window. The panoramic window actually fills this whole section. This white section is all glass all the way to the back and then wraps around the rear of the Defender. So it's just one big sheet of tinted glass, which is a, it really does modernize it. It's, it's kind of a, a unique look. Hinges, billet aluminum, and the billet aluminum hinges here also have what's called safety bolts because a Land Rover Defender is the number one stolen vehicle in the UK. People just love to steal them and they will sell the parts off and it's just, it's crazy. So they really go through the security of how can they keep their Land Rover Defender from being stolen. So the safety bolts that are in here have a really weird uh, pattern, a star pattern that most people are not gonna have the tool to be able to do it. These billet aluminum, these are hand done, and you'll notice the nice brass washers for just a little bit of accent color to say, look, this is bespoke, this is custom. So that's the side of the Defender. Um, it is a diesel, keep that in mind. If you ever put gasoline in one of these, do not start it, do not drive it, because if you put gasoline, you'll get about five miles down the road and the motor will blow up because diesel, gasoline, it's, just, it's, it's a bad mix. Um, exhaust system is a performance exhaust system, which you'll see when we go around to the rear of the, rear of the vehicle. But let's go ahead and take a look on the inside because I definitely want you to see this dark black interior with a white Mulliner package. So here we are in the interior of the Super Defender Maxim, the D90 Arctic package. So you'll notice the interior is pretty simple. It does not have the Apple CarPlay, which is an option. It doesn't have any of the switches. It does, it does have heated seats though, definitely. And it does have the USB, so you can charge your phone or your navigation, whatever you wanna do on that. So the client opted not to do a stereo in here or Apple CarPlay, he just wanted to keep it simple. He opted not to do a leather dash in here, but uh, he did want a nice interior. So for the, the one thing I want you to notice here, just where I'm sitting and then my arm, you'll notice that there's no armrest for me. And the reason being is it wasn't designed for me. It was designed for our client that lives in the Pacific Northwest where he's going to be playing in the snow. And if I want to recline the seat, and what I mean by that, you notice my arm is too short because I'm, I feel almost Smurf size here. But so we can move the seat back and now the seat's back and I would not be able to work the clutch and I can tiptoe the accelerator. So that would be a mess. So it does have extended seat rails and then the rear bulkhead, which is behind me, behind the seats, we've cut it down so the seat's able to recline farther. But the extended seat rails are able to really allow, because he's a, he's a tall fella, so it allows him to be able to get back and have leg room and not have his knees and his chest. Steering wheel wise, this is a Momo leather wrap steering wheel. We can do the Momo, we can do a Modelita. So we have different designs. It's a nice steering wheel. It fits with the design of this truck. It's the smaller steering wheel. It's a 14 inch steering wheel, which you'll see a lot of our other builds are the 15, which is a little larger. But again, he's a bigger guy, athletic guy. So he wanted more room and that's all part of the design, the bespoke process. How tall are you? How much do you weigh? What's your sleeve length? So the center cubby is designed for him. So where it's actually his arm, his arms are longer. He has a, more of a sleeve length. Inside, you will also find USB power too. So you can put whatever inside and charge it there. Windows, you can see the tent now. If I roll it down, which is always interesting, the classic versus doing power windows. It does not have power windows, nor does it have central door locks. So I roll the window down and you can see the amount of tint of what it does. It does have the leather door cards on it. Keep in mind, it's a door card, not a door panel. We're gonna be British here. And what we do with the doors, and you'll notice on all the Helderberg Defenders is the amount of sound deadening that we do in these trucks. So we do three layers of butyl rubber, and then we do a layer of foam in specific points of it. And that really brings the noise down. So when you're driving down the road, well, you don't hear the tires as much, but these tires you're gonna hear. Uh, and if you're doing, if you have an Apple CarPlay, you have your hands free calling. So it's just, it sounds, it, it just, you can have a conversation in here. This one does have the underslung air conditioning unit. 
and the couple reasons for it. One, we had not actually finished testing our air conditioning heating system. So this underslung air conditioning unit is just air conditioning, it's not heat. You have two switches over here on the left. The one is how cold do you want it and how quick do you want the fan. This is completely independent, separate of anything else. Up here under the, on either side of the instrument cluster where the LED gauges are put in. So these gauges are actually an LED backlit system. We opted to keep the, the miles per hour in here versus the kilometers on that because since we're in the States, but it's a LED backlit. Uh, you have your speedometer, you have your fuel gauge, and then you have your temperature gauge. And then of course, all of your warning lights. Here on this side, on the right side, is your fan speed. This is fan speed for your defrost and your heat. All the way down to the number two position is a fast speed, and then all the way up is to turn it off. Over here on the left-hand side, these two levers, you bring the levers up, and then of course you have your defrost, and then you have your heat temperature, and then when you take the one lever down, that is a cool airflow where it brings the cool air in. It's not to be confused. This is not air conditioning. This is just actual wind from the outside, so cool air from the outside, or heat that's being generated from the heater matrix. This one, heater matrix, you might have heard the word in the States called a heater core. Well, in a British Defender, it's a heater matrix. This one has an enlarged quad core heater matrix system so we can generate more heat in the cabin. So in the cold weather, it's, it's helping more. The vents have also been designed a little differently inside the dash. It has a larger tube vent system, and these vents are larger too, so you've got more defrost on the windscreen. It does have heated seats, so there's been a lot to actually make this more of a snow-going machine as what's going on. And especially in this one, we have the additional layers of insulation to help on the heating. So it, it's, it's just it's spectacular. People love this truck. And I think one of the reasons why is the roll cage, the tires, the lift, and it's that classic white color. Well, it has a little bit of blue but there's that classic white color that a lot of us know what Defenders to, to be. The seats in this are the Puma seats, the Puma Autobiography, and it's a smooth leather, and then it has, of course, the quilted pattern with the white contrasting stitch that's all through the seats, the center cubby, the white contrasting stitch on the steering wheel, and then with the Alcantara suede headliner, it also has the white contrasting stitch here. So it's a, it's a nice package, and it's just it's fun to drive. Um, I don't know if it's fun to drive just because it's fun to drive or it's fun to drive because you get a lot of people giving you a thumbs up and taking pictures as you're driving down the road. That definitely makes it fun. So let's move around to the back. Let's uh, talk about that and uh, I will finish with telling you, yes, it is a five-speed manual transmission. Um, automatic is an option, but I would highly tell you, I would highly try to persuade you not to do the automatic transmission because that's the one thing that is not of a modern design. And with the automatic transmission, you end up with a three-speed automatic transmission, which is painfully slow. I'm more than happy to uh, charge you for that automatic transmission and make money off of it, just being honest with you. But I will still try to talk you out of it because it takes the lifeblood out of a Defender. Now let's go to the back. All right, so we're at the back of Maxim, the Super Defender with the Arctic Package. So let me tell you this. Yes, Arctic Package, but can you drive it during the warm weather? Yes, you can drive it during the warm weather. It's just been modified for some snow fun is really what it is. So again, this tire, boy, I tell you what, these tires stand out. And if you had to change the tire, you better bring two of your friends with a strong back. So it's on a premium tire swing. Everything's been reinforced because there's a lot of weight here. So opening up, before we open up the rear, I want you to notice tinted windows in the rear. Uh, third brake light up here. This one does not have the windshield wiper on it, nor does it have the windshield sprayer. Being that we didn't put the Apple CarPlay in it, it does not have the backup camera in it. And uh, he wants peace, quiet, silence. He wants to be in the Pacific Northwest watching the bears and all the critters. That's really what it is. All right, so let's open it up. It's heavy, you feel the weight. So in the rear, You'll notice that it actually, we have the center facing. Let me pull this out. 
I'm always asked about seat belts. Yes, it has seat belts. There's seat belts for four adults in the back and it does have the center facing bench seats. You can fold these up. Doesn't make a lot of sense because it doesn't give you any additional room, but it does have the option to fold up and strap. So center facing buckets for adults fit in here comfortably. They have knee room, leg room, but you could also do the four buckets that would fold up separately, but it takes up more of that uh, knee room for the adults. With the center facing benches, what I like about them is you have room to move side to side, so there's more room for your butt because it's one entire seat. Also, the center facing benches will save you a bit of money versus having to do four separate seats. You see we match the rear, the rear seats with the front seats, and we can do that even if it was a bucket seat too. If you notice the rear bulkhead, which is right below this, this entire bulkhead is for really to create the frame to make it more rigid is what it is. So we did a partial cut, so it's still very rigid, it's fine. And then we do a, a piece of metal on the top, which is riveted in place to make sure that we're keeping the, ri the rig keeping it rigid, Whew, say that quickly, but keeping it very rigid, but it allows the seats to fold back farther so it's comfortable. It does have the Alcantara suede headliner in it, and then it does have the tinted Alpine windows across the top. Something else to notice in the rear of this truck is the stainless steel sill plate here holding the carpet down. It does have the sound deadening and the foam in the back. So the pups are comfortable because it has extra padding with the black carpet going through it. We do have options with different color carpet too. Black is the standard. And then of course you can do the upgrade and you can choose pretty much any color you want. Tans, browns, blues, greens, whatever. And different shades of black if there's such a thing, but I guess there is. Stainless steel sill. And you'll even notice how everything, the bolts are perfect. Everything is nice and clean, clean crisp because it's all been redone. And then of course we have the rear step up bumper with the two inch receiver on the back. So you can put your bike rack, you can tow something and we can wire it for a trailer so you can do the trailer lighting. So it's just, it's a cool truck. It's fun to drive, but there's a couple of other things that I wanna show you that's an available option on a Heldeberg Defender. Have you figured out what it is yet? So what it is, it's a Heldeberg key. It's very heavy. This could be a weapon. It's solid metal, titanium. But if you notice, notice on the front here where it's, it's kind of slopes down and notice the cutouts on the side and notice the slopes on the rear of the key. So what this is, it's actually the top of a Defender. If you look at the top of the Defender, the roof, it slopes down in the front. And then right here, the slit and the slit, those are the Alpine windows. So pretty excited about the key. And then of course, it does have the Helderberg logo on it, the H. And it's just, I think it's just a nice extra touch for a bespoke build. And then moving into the key fob with the H logo, bespoke built by Helderberg. This is actually a body panel. So this is the Land Rover body panel because we 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 pull off a number of body panels, wings, doors, and all that. So this was actually cut out of a body panel and then laser etched with the logo. So there you go. This one does not have central door locks. That's an option, as is power windows. So I will tell you, on a D110, when you're doing power windows, you only get power windows in the front because the power windows in the front is made by, the motors are made by a company in Italy. They do a very nice job. The power windows in the rear, we've had some failures on those, so we're doing power windows in the front. And then of course your central door locks. This one doesn't have any of those options, but that's always an option you can do. I hope you enjoyed the review of Maxim the D90, the Super Defender with the Arctic package. To see more pictures or more videos of this build, just go to helderberg.com and you'll find everything that you want. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me. But of course, I will tell you, be sure and find the FAQ tab on our website. You'll find many of videos there that can answer pretty much any question you could ever have about Defender ownership or Defender lifestyle.